tell you what, let's start off with kind of a nice little effect in PowerPoint. And it's rather a transition effect. I'm calling it the parallax transition effect. And I'll just jump over to my browser for a moment here. I'm quite certain that everyone has seen websites and WordPress theme designs and stuff like that. As you watch while I scroll, we have a nice big image right here. And then what happens is, I'm going to scroll really slow. See, we have another piece of content coming up. And the background image here is kind of moving up also, but not at the same speed. It's kind of what they call a parallax effect. And as it turns out, it's kind of an interesting thing visually, which is why it's probably so popular. Uh, and if I scroll down even more here, you'll see that they kind of can use it oh, in various places and in various ways. Here it's just kind of revealing an image. And then again, another piece of content kind of, or section, I guess, kind of swoops up and takes over the focus. So that's kind of what I mean by a parallax effect. And we can actually duplicate this kind of sweetly in PowerPoint. So what I'm going to do here is I'll kind of show you the end result first. So here I have an image, and I'm going to kick this into slideshow mode. And hopefully, you'll be able to see it well enough over the webinar. So if we click this, this is uh, my background image. I'm going to click again, and a piece of text is going to come in. Right? So welcome. Right? And then when I click again, what's going to happen is it's going to transition from one piece of content to bring in another with the parallax effect on this image. So here we go. OK, so I have a, another section of content here come in. Uh, but again, the secret sauce there is, I'll let it roll one more time, the blue box content is going to come up at a slightly faster speed than the image here goes away. And it's just kind of a, you know, a, an unexpected kind of a transition. It's more than just a push transition, which we could easily do in PowerPoint between two slides. Uh, this gives us a little extra juice. So tell you what, let's kind of, I'm going to jump all the way down here to the bottom, and we'll just kind of build one of these babies from scratch. OK, uh, first we're going to kind of need an image. So I do have a few resources here that I like to use for images, especially big, grandiose ones like this. And the reason I kind of like these is that all three of these resources are basically public domain images. So one of the ones I kind of like is unsplash.com. Let's go to unsplash, and we'll get us a, an image. Like I mentioned, these three sites that we use quite a bit are free to do whatever you want. And essentially, what that means is that they are submitted by the creators, the photographers, with Creative Commons Zero licenses, meaning that there are no restrictions on it, right? So I'm not going to get too much into that. Basically, <laughs> they're free. Do whatever you want with them, right? So you can find just like stunning images of all kinds. And all three of these sites have like search criteria and things like that. But uh, let's just pick one. I'm going to pick anyone. Let's just pick this guy, OK? Beautiful photo. So when I click on the image, now I can copy the image. And let's jump over to PowerPoint. Go down to a blank slide. And I'm just going to paste it as a picture. One of the things you'll find with a lot of these, especially these public domain images, in fact, I'm going to do this just to kind of make a point. They will be huge, like very high res. And so I'm going to hold my control key and zoom out. And what you'll find is that a lot of times that they are about this big and your slide is about this big. The other thing, I'll give you a little tip here, is if I try to resize this, which is not a problem, so we can normally resize it, but 
Let's get in just a little closer. I have a 16 by 9 widescreen slide. A lot of these images are not in a 16 by 9 aspect ratio. Okay, so here's a little trick. Now, certainly I could just stretch this, you know, not that big a deal. <laughs> But let's say that I wanted to, uh, I didn't want to stretch anything out. You can actually click on an image, go to Format, and crop it. And if you crop to this little dealy right here, to Aspect Ratio, I can crop it to a 16 by 9, which is our widescreen format, right? And so I can kind of select well, what part of it I want to crop. I'll just kind of keep it in the middle and then click the crop again and now it is 16 by 9 and I when I resize it notice it's not going to stretch anything. I'm not going to you know do anything goofy like this. It's going to let me grab a corner handle and boom. Right? So everything just sticks. Okay, so that's kind of the first step and a first tip with working with a lot of images uh, like these kinds of, of things uh, from these sites. Nice images, but sometimes you got to monkey with them a little bit to get them to fit properly into PowerPoint, right? The next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to insert a shape and I'm just going to choose a rectangle shape and I'm going to draw it out don't want an outline so I'm going to make sure it doesn't have an outline no outline and then for the fill I think what I probably might do is click on the fill bucket and grab the eyedropper and maybe we pick something that's kind of down at the bottom here so maybe like a nice beige Let's make it the same size as the slide. And then what I'm going to do again, hold my control key, zoom out, so I have lots of room here. And I'm just going to slide this guy right underneath, boom, like that. Okay. So now we've got a, a couple of different elements going on. And to add some content here, something to kind of give contrast to the parallax. I'm also going to insert a text box. So let's put in some text. So let's change the color on that guy to something that's going to stand out. And let's make it nice and big. Are you going? i also just use the snap lines here to kind of center it. And I don't know. Uh, I might even change that font a little bolder. Let me zoom in here. If you change fonts, you'll notice that I kind of, depending upon the structure of the font, I kind of change the positioning here. And yeah, I could kind of grab it and use my guidelines there again. But another trick you can do is if you click on the box there and I go to Format, Align, I'm just going to align it to center. And that's pretty much going to put me right in the middle of the whole deal. Okay, so that's kind of my first piece of text. If I go into slideshow mode, yay, that's nice, right? Nice photo, big font. So let's click on this text box. Again, hold my control key and make a copy of it. Now you could control C and control V but I like using this control key trick to move stuff and I'll show you why let me undo that you know if I just copy and then paste watch what happens see they're like right on top of each other <laughs> and that sometimes if you got a lot of layers or lots of text and you know stuff on your slide that just starts to get messy trying to grab it and move it so let's do this instead let's select the box hold the control key and put it where we want it right see that's just like one of those little uh, speed tricks 
the second piece of content here might be something like are you going up <laughs> so I'm just kind of winging this on the fly and I really just am gonna center this guy so that's fine all right let's see what we got so far so we have an image a shape and two text boxes so the next part of the trick is I'm going to select both the text boxes and the shape so it's pretty easy to you know select the shape I just click on it but if I want to select multiple objects what you do is you hold the shift key and now I can click and click and you'll notice now I have all three of these guys selected and what I'm gonna do is group them right so now we have this group okay so let's make something move when I have my group selected here I want to be selected on the group itself let's go to animations and the way we make something kind of move in a line the way we want is with something called a motion path so we're probably all pretty familiar with you know the regular fades and and wipes and all the funky ones but if we uh, kinda go down here I am going to use not a regular motion path but I'm going to make it a little easier on myself and go to more motion paths right here okay these are like the older ones the legacy ones and I'm just gonna choose up okay say okay and if we preview that notice that it kinda goes up a little bit well it doesn't quite go up as much as I want it to so the secret to motion paths is let's zoom in here and take a little bit of a look at, uh, at, at this thingy here a motion path means take whatever uh, take this starting point and go along this line to this end dot right so what needs to happen let's preview it again I want it to go all I want this uh, shape here to go all the way up and cover our slide so I need to make this longer right I need to make the path of the motion longer one of the tricks that you're gonna wanna know when you're working with motion paths is if you grab this and just try to move it up you might get it to go straight but more often than not things get a little squirrely okay so here's your trick you wanna hold the shift key down and now you want to move this up and it, you can't screw it up okay so I'm just gonna make this go up until it covers my slide it's like I didn't make my box quite big enough but it'll still work so now let's preview that let's go in the slideshow to preview it actually so let's go here and click and it just kinda wipes up over the image now the difference between just covering it up and using like a push transition is let's watch it one more time it's actually going to cover without this image moving so in and of itself that's not you know a, a bad little trick to kinda use but let's kick it up a notch here and so what I want to do is I want to also apply that up motion path to my photo and here's an easy way to do that if we click on our group which we already have this motion path for make sure you're you're on your animations tab you click the animation painter and now I'm gonna click on the image the picture and what that does is it paints the effect or copies the effect from you know whatever I grabbed it from to whatever I wanted it to I also want that to happen with previous because I want everything to move at the same time so now if I click you now that's just a regular push transition for all practical purposes to make it the parallax kind of deal I'm gonna click on this guy and uh, let's do one other thing 
it's kind of hard for me to tell which motion path is which. If you didn't know this, when you start adding stuff on slides, sometimes it's kind of hard to, to tell what's what. So here's how you fix that. I'm going to go to the Home tab, and we're going to go to the Selection pane. The Selection pane shows me all of the stuff that's on a slide, and you can turn things off. So I, I turned off that group that we created and now if I click here and let's open our animation pane see now I can tell which is my motion path here so to get the parallax effect I don't want these two to animate at the same speed there we go so I'm gonna hold my shift key and just bring this guy down to about maybe halfway see how it's only about halfway overlapped and oop. <laughs> I need to turn my other stuff back on when you use the selection pane don't forget to turn your other stuff back on so now we should be good to go and I don't know let's preview it so we'll do that and then click and boom there you go parallax effect now one of the interesting things is you can kind of stack these up so I could create another slide that kind of starts with this shape right and then maybe put the image underneath it in other words just kind of reverse the process and now I can move from slide to slide with parallax effects on you know multiple slides I'm not really going to get into that too much because that's probably enough for you to kind of digest there for a minute but it's an interesting effect by the way I will go ahead and give you guys this slide so you'll have all of this stuff <laughs> I showed you how to build it so you could understand how it worked and stuff but in reality and I think this should work we should probably test it if you have a slide like this then you can use this slide in your presentations kind of like a swipe slide so let's see if this works I haven't actually tested it yet so I could uh, let's see change picture and let's see if we can find another one now in reality I probably would want one that is of the proper size let's just go to a media library and see if we can let's just pick one and insert it so in this particular case I'd have to you know do the the cropping and stuff but yep it all still works <laughs> so I could of course now change this just click on the group and then click on the shape and we can change the color you know like we did before maybe pick uh, something like that and then of course you can change the text right so and parallax parallax it's parallactic so to speak